Father, we love you and thank you so much, Lord, for your grace uh, just to be here today. Thank you for the privilege to serve you uh, here in Temple Baptist Church as workers and our Sunday school. And Lord, help us never take for granted the opportunities we have to serve you. And this week, even between now and the Lord's Day, I pray you'd use each one of us to reach those who need to be reached and to see them in our classes uh, in the Lord's house uh, this coming Lord's Day. And uh, Lord, we just pray you would work in their lives and work in our hearts, Lord, and help us to be prepared and ready as teachers. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's turn again to Acts chapter number 1. I'll begin reading at verse 10 and come to lesson 10, if you would, in your material as we continue in this study on believing and belonging, the joy of church membership. And so we're hitting uh, each week a different theme, a different topic that relates to what it means to be a member of a local New Testament church. And before we read our text, I want to read to you the aims for this week's lesson. You'll notice there are three of them that are given there in your material. Uh, Number one, we want to learn that we should pray together as a church, praying to God in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Number two, we want to know that God will hear and answer our prayers as we pray together in one body in agreement. And then number three, we want to ask God to open doors of opportunity to spread the gospel to those who are lost. And a lot of applications that we'll see here in just a moment, but look at Acts chapter number one. The title of the lesson is Agreeing Together in Prayer. Agreeing Together in Prayer. Acts chapter one, we begin in verse 10. If you'll follow along, we'll read through verse 14. It says, And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, Which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room, where abode both Peter and James and John, And Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon, Zelotus, and Judas, the brother of James. Notice verse 14. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. Now, the key statement there is in verse 14. These all continue with one accord in prayer and supplication. Now, here we have the church that Jesus started. And as the Lord Jesus ascended up on high, they're watching the risen Lord, which must have been an amazing thing to see. They're watching his hands lifted up, says in Luke chapter 24, to bless them, seeing the nail scars in his hands. And they see the resurrected Christ, they're energized to see that he really is alive, and he's shown himself many times to them, but now it's been about 40 days since the resurrection, and the Lord Jesus takes him out on the Mount of Olives, and he ascends up into the heavens. A cloud takes him out of their sight, and the question is, well, what is this young church going to do? Well, Jesus had just given them an assignment. He had just given them a command. He said, go back into Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father. And then when you receive the Holy Ghost, when you receive that power of the Holy Ghost, then you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the most part of the earth. So they knew their mission, but they knew they had an initial command to go back to Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father. So when they met together, what did they do? Well, the Bible says they continue with one accord in prayer. And we know that after some time of praying together in one accord, that the promise of the Father, the Holy Spirit of God, did come. They were empowered. And then they went out from that upper room and they began to fulfill and did fulfill the mission that Jesus Christ gave his church. They did it by the power of the Spirit of God. An amazing thing. And those of us who may feel like we're a little over-churched, we don't need to get over-churched. We need to look at the amazing work that God enabled this church to do here in the book of Acts. 
So the point this week is this, this whole matter of prayer. Uh, What does it mean to be a member of a local church, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and to belong to a local church? Well, one of the great factors in belonging to a local church is now we can pray together. We can pray in one accord with other brethren in our local assembly and in our fellowship of believers. And there's power in that. In fact, when we continue on through the book of Acts, we won't have time to look at all the references. A few of them are given in your reading material. You may want to look at a couple of those this Lord's Day. But we see that the church, the local church, met at times for preaching. They met at times for exhortation, to declare the Word of God, to exhort one another in the Word of God. That happened. But there are also times when they met together just to pray, to unite their hearts together and go to the throne of God together and pray And that's a part of the joy of church membership. Don't you thank God that you've got brothers and sisters who can pray together with you and for you? In fact, I don't know what I'd do if I didn't have that. And all of us who've been in a church for some length of time have come to trials, we've come to difficulties, we've come to decisions, we've come to crises in life, and sometimes those are big things, perhaps sometimes they're smaller things in scale, but they're big to us. And isn't it great to be able to speak to someone, to be able to meet together and say, let's pray together about this. Or for someone to give you a phone call or someone to see you in the Lord's house and say, you know what, I'm going to be praying for you. Or let's pray together about that. I'm going to join you in that. I think of how many times, how many thousands of times people have responded even at the end of a message in our assembly when we meet together. And some other brother or sister has come alongside that person and said, you know what? And they put an arm around and said, you know what? I want to pray with you. I want to pray for you. How can I help you? How can I, how can we get in one accord on this matter? And they pray together. And there's something powerful about that. Now, what does it mean to agree together in prayer? What does it mean to be a part of a church and now we have access to pray with one another? Well, look in the lesson, if you would, please. And you'll notice that there are seven different truths that are mentioned in relation to prayer in the church. Now, if you're teaching this Lord's Day, which many of you are, you'll have to sort of think about how long am I going to spend on each one of these, okay? You can't spend 10 minutes on any one of them. Probably going to teach for 20, 25 minutes at the most. So you might spend three or four minutes at the most on any one of these. But I would encourage you to be sure that you give equal time and attention to each one. Now, let's just look at them quickly in our preview First of all, we look in Acts 1.14 in our text, prayer declares our dependence upon God. We notice in verse 14, it says they continue with one accord in prayer and in supplication. And what the whole point is this, they're just crying out to God saying, Lord, we need you. (laughs) We can't do your mission unless you send uh, the Holy Spirit of God. Unless you come, unless you empower, we can't do what you told us to do. And, you know, we have to understand that as a church, when we pray together, we're not wasting time. We're not wasting time at all because when we pray together, we're all acknowledging how much we need God. It's not just positive uh, spirit. It's not just trying to be optimistic. And it's not just trying to emotionally encourage each other. It's everybody throwing themselves at the feet of Jesus saying, Lord, we need you. So prayer, as we see it in the New Testament, When a church prays together, that church is saying, we need God. (laughs) We're declaring how... By the way, when we pray at the beginning of an assembly, when we meet together, why do we begin in prayer? Why does our pastor say, let's all stand, let's all unite our hearts together? In fact, usually he asks everybody to be still and let's, let's be sure we're not doing anything else. We can all do this together. Why do we pray at the beginning of a meeting? You know why? Because we want to all acknowledge together how much we need God. So prayer is an important part of a local assembly. Number two, through prayer we seek God for laborers. Now you want to turn on the Lord's Day to Matthew chapter 9, verse 37 and 38. That's a familiar passage, but maybe even have someone in the class read that. If you somehow let's get that out, because that's a key passage. When they saw the multitudes and Christ was moved with compassion... He turned to them and said in verse 37, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. So what do we do? Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. So a local church, when we see a harvest, 
for the Lord, which the harvest field really is the world, but when we're made aware of here's a need, maybe we're made aware of a need in our community or our town or our county, when we're made aware of a place where here's, here's a harvest for Christ, here are people who need the Lord, it should all start with prayer. We should begin by saying, let's pray that the Lord of the harvest would send forth laborers into that harvest. And God will touch hearts. He'll touch hearts within that local assembly and say, that's what I want you to do. That's what I, how I want you to be involved. But a church prays together and says, dear God, send the laborers into certain areas. We encourage everybody in our church to have a certain harvest fields in mind, certain countries around the world, certain places within our own community. Sometimes we put in a prayer bulletin, pray for this Bible club, pray for this particular nursing home ministry, or pray for this particular ministry of the church. Why, why are we doing that? Because we want to pray together that God will fill that harvest field with laborers so that souls can come to Christ. Number three, as one body, we agree together in prayer. Now, that's the title of the lesson, really. Look at Matthew chapter 19, and please be sure you turn that, excuse me, Matthew chapter 18, verse 19. This is what the Lord Jesus taught. In fact, come down to verse number 19 of chapter 18 there in Matthew. He said, again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. You know what I underlined in my Bible in that verse? A little phrase, it shall be done. Now, I didn't write that. God did. <laughs> But he said, if you'll meet the criteria first, if you'll agree on earth as to anything that you will ask of God, he says, it shall be done. And we sit here as adults and we think, well, there's got to be a rational explanation for that. There is. It shall be done. All right. If we'll agree together for what we're asking God for, he says, it will be done. Now, we can believe that by faith, we can cut it out of our Bible, but that's what God said. So it's powerful to agree together in prayer, and that's what an opportunity we have in a local church. Then notice number four, we seek God's protection through prayer. Jesus said that there in Matthew, if we're still in the gospel according to Matthew, chapter number 26, dealing with his disciples there, he said in verse 41, "'Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation.'" The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. You see, those disciples were under the attack of the devil. In fact, all of them were about to flee. They were all about to cave in. And he said, you need to watch, you need to pray. You know what I've noticed? That in a loving, praying church, when people see somebody else about to falter or about to fall, they don't criticize that member. Guess what they all do? They start praying for them. They, they start going after that person in prayer. When somebody starts to backslide a little bit or fall out in a, in a loving church that's everything Jesus wanted to be, they don't start maligning that person. And that type, you, Guess what that church starts doing? They start agreeing together and say, Lord, uh, help that person. The devil's trying to get them. They need protection. They need some spiritual victory. And isn't it great to think that there could be other brothers and sisters who are looking out for us, for our good and for God's glory, who would pray for us that the devil's hand would be removed and that God's protection would be on us. Isn't that a great thing? That's part of being in a praying church. Then notice number five. We have increased faith and enlarged vision as we pray. Won't take time to go here, but in Acts chapter number four, we find a church that was under persecution. You'll see the verses given there, verse 23 and following. A church that was being persecuted. Their leaders were being persecuted. And they come back, and guess what they do? In opposition, they just turn to God and they pray. They say, well, what happened? Well, when they got up off their knees there, guess what they did? They just went back out, and with greater boldness, they saw more of what God wanted them to do. You know, that's what happens when we pray together. God enlarges our vision, and he makes us stronger in our faith to do his will. Notice the uh, sixth thing, if you would. We face great trials through prayer. This is a reference to Acts chapter 12, where the church here in Jerusalem had an issue. They had a great trial. Their pastor was thrown in prison. And not only was he thrown in prison, but it was known that Herod wanted to kill him. He had done a pretty good thing in killing James, and now he's got Peter in prison there in Acts chapter number 12. And so this church's pastor 
is gone, and the rumor is he's about to have his head cut off or something. He's going to be executed. So what did the church do? Well, it says in verse 5, But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. This church just said, we're going to get together, and we're just going to keep praying for Peter. We're going to pray to God for him. We're going to intercede together. And you know what God did. He sent an angel to stage a prison break, didn't he? And he led Peter right out there in the middle of the night. Peter comes knocking at the door, and Rhoda can't believe it. And she drops her jaw and turns around and forgets to open the latch. And they have to go to the door and find out it's time to stop the prayer meeting. It's time to have a praise meeting. Why? Because God just answered the prayer. Here's our pastor standing right here, and he's not dead, he's alive. So when we go through a great trial, by the way, we do go through trials, don't we? A church is a body, and when one member suffers, guess what? We all suffer with it. One member's hurting, we all hurt with that person. One member's suffering, we, we feel like we're all going through it. So what do we do? Let's pray. Let's pray our way through the trials. And then notice the seventh thing. Through prayer, we seek God for opportunities to spread the gospel. You see, God will quicken our minds and open doors that we could never open on our own. There, there's no doubt about that. This is what Paul shared to the church in Colossae. In Colossians chapter 4, he said in verse 2, Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving, with all praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ. Paul said, church, pray. Pray for what? Pray for an open door. You know, I've seen just in my time here at our church, which has been, whatever, 15 years or so now, I have seen God open doors that we never thought could be open. And those of you have been around a while, you know that's true. I mean, I've seen doors open, not just for uh, ministries here, but just in many different ways, even in individual families. I've seen God do things and open doors for the gospel to go forth and for people to be saved that I never saw and nobody here ever saw. But we prayed and we sought God, and guess what? He said, yeah, I'm going to give you an opportunity. And that's what God wants. He wants the church to come together and seek him for open doors so that we can do more of what we ought to do in getting the gospel to people who are lost. You know, pastor mentions all the time, God, God is always advancing. Hudson Taylor's motto, God's always advancing. And you know how we advance as a church? We advance through prayer. We move forward through prayer. God opens the doors. And that's the way to seek God's face and see God working. So seven different truths mentioned here. Again, take a little time, space them out, and maybe some practical uh, stories to illustrate some of these things. It be very helpful while you're teaching. You may even have two or three people in the class that want to share a comment or two of how they've seen this in their own life. But these are very practical things to remind us of what it means to believe on the Lord and then to belong to a, a local church uh, like the one that we're in. And may God help us. Father, we love you. We thank you for your, your word and your truth. And uh, Lord, we pray that all that we say and learn and study this week about prayer would be reminders to us to instigate even more prayer and even more praying together in our lives and in our church. Uh, may it motivate us to see that there's even greater opportunity, even greater doors, even greater deliverances if we'll do more of praying together and agreeing together in prayer. So help us, Lord, we pray. Bless in the remainder of this meeting and bless in the service.